Good morning and welcome to the John DeVito Show. I hope everybody is doing well. It's Thursday. We're almost at the weekend. And I've been thinking a lot about the state of our country right now. I've been watching the protests between Israelis and Palestinians in the United States of America. This morning in the city of Boston, a bunch of lunatic liberals blocked the BU Bridge and prevented traffic from going through. And we have seen nothing but unrest in the three years in which Joe Biden has been president. Now, if you're if you voted for Joe Biden, I mean if you if you thought that Joe Biden was going to be an improvement over Donald Trump, I'm here to tell you it's okay to admit that you were wrong. I mean, I don't know how any red-blooded American can look at the job that Joe Biden's done over the last three years and come up with any other conclusion other than the fact that Joe Biden has been an absolute disaster. He has made one blunder after another. He has literally almost destroyed the greatest country in the face of the earth in three short years. Now, many of us, like myself, believe that Biden stole the election. I don't think there is any way on God's green earth that this person got 81 million votes. And last night I was researching the election and what happened back in 2020. And this is not what we're going to talk about primarily today. We're going to talk about the many gaffes and the many failures that Trump has had through that, excuse me, that Biden has had throughout his presidency. So I'm looking at a list right now that talks about what happened during the election back in 2020. Now, if you remember, many of us went to bed on election night. When we went to bed, Donald Trump was blowing Joe Biden out. It wasn't even close. Now, at 3 a.m. in the morning after election day, they stopped counting votes. They shut it down. They stopped counting. And this is what the election results look like in the key swing states at 3 o'clock in the morning before they shut down the voting. In the state of Pennsylvania, Joe Biden had won at 3 a.m. 41.8% of the votes. Donald Trump, 57% of the votes in Pennsylvania. Donald Trump had 2.5 million. Joe Biden, 1.8 million. There should have been a little check mark next to Trump's name. He had won Pennsylvania. Michigan, Donald Trump at 3 o'clock in the morning had 54% of the vote. Joe Biden, 44% of the vote. Joe Biden had 1.4 million votes. Donald Trump, 1.7 million votes. In Georgia, in Georgia, Donald Trump had 53% of the votes. 53%. Joe Biden, 45%. Joe Biden had 1.899 million votes. Donald Trump, 2.2 million. North Carolina, we seen a theme yet? Three o'clock in the morning. Votes stopped. The counting stopped. In North Carolina, Donald Trump had a narrow lead, 50.1% to 48.7%. Biden had 2.6 million votes. And, by, and Trump had 2.7.5 million votes. How about Wisconsin? Trump, 51.7% of the votes. Biden, 46.8% of the votes. So when you look at that, people come out and say that there was no cheating in the election. How can you even say that? There's no chance Biden got 81 million votes. He cheated. He stole the election. And everything Trump said has been true. Now, I want to go through my list from A to Z of Biden blunders. And there have been plenty. I'm sure we're going to be missing some, but let's get through this and go through it and talk a little bit about each one. Let's start with Afghanistan. It was an absolutely humiliating abandonment to the Taliban amid America's chaotic and deadly military withdrawal. It may be Biden's biggest failure. I will never forget 
watching the videos of people in Afghanistan who had supported the United States of America throughout the war. We left them behind. We left them to die. And there were people literally hanging from the airplane that was leaving with people. There were people hanging from the wheels and dropping to their death. We left billions of dollars worth of weapons of war in Afghanistan that are now being used by terrorists all over the world. What happened in Afghanistan was a travesty. And we hear nothing about it. So Afghanistan, it was an absolute disaster, a shit show. All right, border security is the B. Border security has completely collapsed. An estimated 6.3 million illegal aliens from at least 172 nations have invaded America under Biden. Hundreds of thousands have received free bus or plane tickets into the homeland. Others have scored free health care, education, and even hotel rooms all over the country. How do we have a secure country when we don't know who's in our country? We could have terrorists. We could have serial killers. We could have drug dealers. We could have murderers entering into our country. And Joe Biden has just opened up the gates and allowed all of these criminals into our country. I'm sure some of them are good people. But again, they're still illegal in this country. They are illegal. That is against the law. And Biden has allowed it. Crime. Crime is out of hand. It's plaguing American citizens, cities, chiefly those ran by the thug-hugging Democratic mayors and left-wing take-a-hoodlum-to-lunch prosecutors. Democrat in chief Biden seems to improve, and crime is running rampant in democratically controlled cities and states. We have pandemonium in our country. We have lawlessness in our country. And this is all directly correlated to Joe Biden and his ineptitude as president of the United States. And he is an installed president. He was not elected. He was named our overlord. And he is the chief executive of this destruction. Documents marking classified surfaced in the garage of Biden's Wilmington, Delaware mansion alongside his 1967 Corvette, and also in a Washington, D.C. Penn Biden Center, which was an alleged think tank. As a senator and VP, Biden lacked presidential declassification authority, but he still illegally possessed some 20 classified papers. And he had them in his garage next to the Corvette with the door open. So again, they crucified Trump for having classified documents. Of course, he was president, and they were marked declassified. What punishment has there been for Biden? Nothing. Showing the system is rigged for Biden. Energy. Let's talk about energy. We were becoming energy independent under Trump. That's vanished. Right away, initially, he killed the Keystone Pipeline. Biden is now out there begging. Saudi Arabia and Venezuela to boost petroleum production to the United States. Begging them. He's on his knees. We had independence. We were not dependent on our enemies for energy under Trump. Biden has also completely blown that. Let's talk about fentanyl. Deadly drug. It's cascading across the U.S.-Mexico border. It is killing some 70,000 Americans annually, mainly through unwitting ingestion of counterfeit pharmaceuticals polluted with this deadly drug. Fentanyl poisoning has become the number one cause of death among Americans between the ages of 80, 18 and 45. Thank you, Joe Biden. Thank you, Brandon, for killing our people. Killing our people by allowing these drug lords to walk into our country with fentanyl. Great job, Joe. How about gas? Gas stoves. Gasoline. Gas stoves. We'll start with that. 
They are also in Biden's crosshairs. Climate change, global warming, acid rain, the next ice age, the hole in the ozone layer. Gas stoves are the latest that Biden is targeting. He wants to remove them from people's homes. Are you kidding me? This guy is a clown. This guy is a clown. Keep your hands off my guns and keep your hands off our gas stoves. Unbelievable. Not to mention the price of gasoline, which is shot through the roof. Right? We can't afford to fill our cars to go to work anymore. But that's part of the plan. They want high gas prices to prevent us from driving to play into the global warming bullshit. Enough is enough. H. How about Hunter Biden? Hunter Biden is worse than Billy Carter and any other presidential sibling or child in the history of our country. Hunter Biden is a train wreck of epic proportions. Let's talk about the laptop. They said it was misinformation. They said it was a lie. They said it wasn't Hunter's. The laptop was Hunter's. It's been proven. There are thousands of pictures of child porn, documentation of his dealings with China where he was paying his father bribe money. He is a deadbeat dad. He reportedly slept with Bo Biden's daughter, his niece. He slept with, he had naked pictures of Bo Biden's wife on his laptop. This man is a scumbag. He visited the White House and they found cocaine on the floor. Jeez, I wonder whose cocaine that was. Maybe Hunter's? Unbelievable. Hunter Biden, a disaster. And the media ignores him. How about inflation? Back when Trump was in office, inflation was in check. It was 1.4 annually when Biden took office. And he triggered a tsunami of federal spending. Federal spending. The result of all of his federal spending caused the consumer price price index to hit 9.1% before falling back to what it is today at 4.9%. Under Trump, under Trump, it was 1.4. It spiked to 9.1% under Biden, and it's still at 4.9% when the Fed has a 2% target. It's double, more than double than what the Fed needs. And that's all on Biden again. Justice. Let's talk about justice. Justice fully follows two tracks. Violent leftists like Antifa and the people that have hijacked Black Lives Matter. Remember the George Floyd riots where billions of dollars of damage was done. People were out attacking other people. And it was called peaceful protests. The left wing members of Congress were promoting the violence. They were encouraging the violence. But that was not called an insurgency. January 6th was called an insurgency. There are people in jail from January 6th. There was no one in jail from the violent outbursts in the summer of 2020 called the George Floyd peaceful protests. Justice has been one-sided, and that is not what the United States of America is about. Now, we mentioned this next one earlier, the Keystone XL pipeline. Joe Biden killed it right away, along with 11,000 American jobs. So he killed energy independence and killed 11,000 jobs in the process. Way to go, Brandon. Lynching is something some people still want to do. Biden declared on February 17th. That was his quote. Really? Where exactly are these white nationalists itching to hang blacks from trees? Lynching is a horrible, horrible thing that happened in the past in this country. And it's very important for all of us to learn about history so history is not repeated. And people will say, well, history can't be repeated. You look at the Holocaust. Well, look what's happening now to Jewish people. History can be repeated. Lynching is something that happened in the past. And as far as I've seen, there are no white supremacist groups that are out there looking to lynch people of color. And that's something that Biden said. It's irresponsible. And he is only saying it to divide and conquer the American people and turn white people against black people, black people against white people. It's divisive and it's evil. Mandated COVID-19 vaccines. 
Way to go, Joe. My body, my choice, right? Isn't what isn't that what they say? Not when it comes to the COVID nine vac COVID nineteen vaccines that were experimental at best. It forced eight thousand three hundred and thirty nine young healthy GIs out of armed services. Police officers were fired. Firefighters were fired because they refused the clot shot, the vax. I'm sorry, but what they did with the mandated COVID-19 vaccines, what they did when they tried to get vaccine ID passports was pure fascism, pure communism, and things that are not, should not be happening in the United States of America. It was a Gestapo tactic, and we can never forget what these people did to us, forcing us to mask up, and it was useless, and then forcing the jab on us. Never let it happen again. News conferences. There haven't been many. They've been plenty, pr pretty rare for Dementia Joe. November 11th saw, and that was of last year, saw his last presser. He doesn't give them. And you know why he doesn't give them? And this isn't making fun of Joe Biden. Joe Biden has dementia. Joe Biden should not be running the country. Joe Biden needs to get the care that he needs. And his family and his supposed political allies are leaving him out there when he's not cognitively able to run this country. And they're leaving him out there to dry. Joe Biden can't speak in public because he can't maintain his thought process. Just terrible. In addition to news conferences, how often do you see one-on-one -on -one interviews with Dementia Joe? Very seldom. He granted 58 in his first two years compared to Trump, who had 205. Obama had 275, and George W. Bush only had 89. So, 58. 58 one-on-one -on -one interviews. It's because he's being handled. He's not being allowed to, because he can't do it. How about the Pentagon priorities under Biden? They've devolved completely from national defense to pronouns in a frantic search for white nationalists, whoever they are, and the imposition of of the Green New Deal in uniform. That's right, AOC and Ed Markey's brainchild, the Green New Deal, preventing cow farts from causing climate change. You can't make this shit up, and it amazes me that the American people buy into this stupidity. Quotes are key for Biden's equity agenda, including a $3. billion debt relief program exclusively for non-white farmers. Are you kidding me? So, <laughs> the white farmers that are out there working, they don't deserve any of the money. The people that provide our food, that create the food that we eat, that keeps us alive, only the black farmers deserve assistance from the government, not the white farmers. Can you be any more divisive? Can you be any more divisive and that's primarily what equity is. It's dividing us. Dividing us and conquering us. The Art of War Sun Tzu, Division 101. Let's talk about Russia. The Russian cyber attackers seamlessly sabotaged the America's colonial pipeline. Biden swiftly exonerated the Kremlin. He then greenlighted completion of the sense-detonated Nord Stream 2 pipeline that would have pumped Russian natural gas into Germany. Biden also approved a summit with Russian dictator Vladimir Putin. Those rewards for possible Russian subterfuge against the U.S. property transmitted weakness and likely encouraged Putin to invade Ukraine. Well, that's great, though. You know, Putin invaded Ukraine, and we've sent how many hundreds of billions over there? And what were they saying, that Trump's in bed with Russia? Oh, Joe Biden. Just a disaster on every front. How about Saudi Arabia? Along with Iran, they now share a Beijing-brokered alliance. Trump's strategy to isolate the Ayatollahs is kaput. Way to go, Joe. Destroying America. One step at a time. <laughs> How about the teachers' union? The boss, Randy Weingarten, colluded with Biden's Centers for D D Disease Control and Prevention to lock down schools and trap kids in Zoom classrooms. Test stores tumbled. 
the children of America are more depressed than they've ever been. The learning gap is larger than it's ever been. So the schools, and this is not meant to disparage teachers. I have a great amount of respect for teachers. Teachers are amazing professionals. But they have both of their hands tied behind their backs because of the Biden administration and their policies. Ukraine has received $77 billion in aid from Biden and neither performance goals nor a timetable for victory or ceasefire. So we just keep sending the money to Ukraine. Zelensky's got his arms out and Biden's paid him off. Look up all the American companies that were tied to COVID-19, the biotech companies that reside in Ukraine that Joe Biden has ties to. These are all payoffs going to Ukraine and going to Zelensky. Do the research yourself. Look it up. All right. How about V? I like this one. And this is a complete alphabet of Biden's gaffes. And I kind of like this, the way this was constructed. Vice President V. Kamala Harris. Do we need to say anything else? The cackling queen who basically earned her way to the top by being on her back is one aortic rush from the presidency. She epitomizes overpromise and under delivery. She is the border czar and is still yet to travel to the border on Mexico. Kamala Harris is an absolute disaster. And she might actually be, if she became president, she might actually be worse than Biden. I don't even know if that's possible. Joe Biden, uh, J- Jimmy Carter, every day, literally wakes up and goes, Thank God for Joe Biden. Jimmy Carter will never be mentioned again as the worst American president. That title is solely on Joe Biden's shoulders. And it's going to take a miracle of all miracles for anyone to unseat Biden as the worst president in American history. All right, how about the White House? Let's talk about the White House. Lids have been called on as early as 9 a.m. when Biden plans no further public appearances. Journalists go home without fear of missing out. Biden's doing nothing. He's at the shore all the time, at his vacation homes. He barely is in the White House. When he's there, he doesn't do anything. It is just a disaster. This has been the largest fake presidency in the history of this country. And let's face it, Biden's not really the president. Obama's the president. We all know it. I'll say it. All right. How about for C, Z, I don't even know how to pronounce it, Z Jinping for the Chinese. Uh, communist dictator, has yet to hear Biden even ask about COVID-19's origins. I mean, this this whole thing started in China. It was purposely developed. Uh, Fauci and Obama visited the location where it came from. But according to official readouts, such weakness surely fueled the Chinese communist dictator's anti-dollar diplomacy supremacy, spy balloons above the U.S. military facilities, unprecedented harassment of Taiwan, and other efforts to torpedo America as the planet's leading superpower. We are under attack, and Joe Biden is complicit. Young Americans with college loans need not to repay them. Thanks to Biden's student debt bailout, Biden wants to squander $400 billion to nationalize up to $20,000 in obligations per borrower earning as much as one hundred twenty-five. dollars thousand annually personal responsibility keeping promises <laughs> that's quaint now let's think about democrats like liz warren who lied about being native american to be a professor at harvard making four hundred thousand dollars a year to teach one class but then she wants loan repayment of course you don't want these poor students that have overpaid for your lack of educational prowess to be responsible for their loans you know what? If you, if you want to become an English teacher in high school and you're going to make $60,000 a year, go to Harvard and rack up $400,000 in debts and then not be able to pay your money back and then have the government pay it off for you. I paid my loans. My wife paid her loans. My father paid his loans. Why the hell are these young, entitled people having the government pay their loans for them? Disgusting. How about zinc? What does zinc mean? Zinc is the primary component part of electric vehicles. Although graphite and lithium are also very common components, even as Biden mandates 67% of new cars be electric by 2032, he padlocks mines whose copper and nickel 
are also essential for EV ingredients. Biden's EV policy is brain dead. Biden botches, defy tabulation, uh, rare obsession, soaring federal spending, swell national debt, sagging mental acuity. It's too bad we only have 20 set, 26 letters in the alphabet. But zinc and the lithium and the different components of the electric vehicles are not green. These electric vehicles are not green. And these electro ve electric vehicles, when they're being charged, charged, the power grid is charging these electric vehicles. And those are powered by fossil fuels. So this whole climate change thing is nothing but garbage. Uh, okay, looking back at my clock now, I got off of my page. I'm at 25 minutes, so I'm running a little bit long today. But this had to be said today. Joe Biden is the worst president in American history. He stole the election from Donald Trump. And he and the left-wing lunatics are intent on ruining this country. Americans, we need to get out. We need to vote for Trump. We need to, we need to make sure he gets 100 million votes. And we also need to ensure election integrity because nothing has been changed since 2020. I love all of you. Thank you for tuning into the John DeVito Show. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Happy Thanksgiving next week. And if you like my show, please tell a friend. Okay, God bless all of you and thank you.